I'm gonna go out on a limb and say something really outrageous right now. If you're an Affinity user, you should be designing everything in Affinity Publisher. I know that sounds totally crazy. <laughs> Let's go. What's going on everybody? My name is Dave Conrad. I'm an artist and designer based in Southern California and I had this amazing epiphany about how to design and the process for which I should be designing pretty much all of the things. Now, I've talked in the past about which Affinity app would be best for designing different things, but there's something very specific about Affinity Publisher. I've talked about this numerous times too. There's something very specific about Affinity Publisher that sets it apart from so many other apps. And it's why I believe it's the one app you should be working in the most. But before I go into that one thing, I want to talk about what it was that spurred this idea in me. And it came down to me wanting to design a t-shirt, but I was challenging myself to, instead of designing it in Affinity Photo, which I normally would do, I wanted to try and see if I could design it in Affinity Designer. Because I figured, well, I don't use Designer enough. A lot of people are asking for designer-oriented content. The problem with this is that I have learned over the years how to use both Adobe Photoshop and Affinity Photo as the main app for designing my stuff. So the things that I am comfortable with are all within those apps. I design better, I just have I, I have an understanding of what those func the functionality of those apps can do. I also fully understand my own personal style and how I design things. And Photo and Photoshop, they both fit that kind of aesthetic. I really have a bit of more of a grunge, a little bit more uh, punk rock, a little bit more dirty, and not as clean as some of the vector work that you do in Designer. Now sure, of course, in Affinity Designer, you can do pixel-oriented stuff, but you don't have the full functionality that you do within Affinity Photo. So I struggled to get the t-shirt designed in Affinity Designer and said, well, I'll just go back over to Affinity Photo. And then I thought about it for a half a second and I thought, Studio Link. Studio Link is Affinity's technology which allows you to be within Publisher and seamlessly jump over to Affinity Designer to design vector graphics or Affinity Photo to do more rasterized graphics and then back again over to Affinity Publisher to finish out your page or layout. You also have this ability to kind of jump around when you're in both Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo, but it's not as fluid. It's way more fluid when you start working in Affinity Publisher. And so when I really put my mind to it, I thought to myself, why wouldn't you design everything in Affinity Publisher? Because all you would need to do is if you needed to add some sort of graphic, whether it's raster or vector, all you'd have to do is go over to the different studio personas. But instead of me just talking at your face about this, I'm gonna put it into practice. Now I have never designed a t-shirt in Affinity Publisher, never done it. But I have confidence that I know I can design certain things in Affinity Photo, and so I'm just gonna jump over to that persona and do it there. I also know with this particular design, I want to incorporate that new contour tool that we talked about in a previous video. I wanna use that functionality as well, and so I'll be jumping over to the designer persona while I'm there, and then back again. Let's get into it. Okay, first thing, I'm trying something a little bit different. You're gonna see me down here in the corner because uh, I kinda wanna get out of the way and I want to just experiment with this instead of like me popping my big fat head in every once in a while when I just wanna, you know, say something. Instead, uh, I'll be down here narrating while you guys watch what's going on above. Now what we got on the screen here right now is basically the initial comp. Not much is done here except adding a little bit of type and doing it in a creative way. Now this shirt that I'm building or have built is actually meant to be displayed on a black or dark colored shirt. And so I really just did this just to get the scope of it and then I reversed all the colors out and did a bunch of other stuff to it, which you will actually see. Let's go ahead and close this one because I don't need it. And this is actually the final. As you can see, quite a bit going on here. You can see all the different layers and even some of these layers have layers upon layers. And so there's a whole bunch here. I'm not going to go through and show you how I did every single aspect of this. I'm not going to walk you through the entire design because actually this design took me a significant amount of time to build. Really what I just wanted to come in here and show you is that I built this whole thing within Affinity Publisher and just jumping over to the different personas like the designer persona and the photo persona just to accomplish some of the things that I wanted to do, but got it back over here in Affinity Publisher so that I can export it out and you know make it into what it's supposed to be. I started working on this, this, uh, this brain side here. I'm gonna 
take that one off and show you the full version. This one here, this layer right here has been rasterized and then I've got a mask applied to it and did some other things. But uh, this one here, as you can see, there's a very hard line. A very hard line because it's just that semicircular shape that we were talking about before. And this isn't actually a brain. This is actually brain coral from the, out of the ocean that I desaturated, as you can see. And I applied the curve as a mask and then I adjusted the levels. And then on top of that, I added an effects layer where I just change the color overlay to this golden color that's pervasive in the image. Now, if you look at the difference between these two, you can see it doesn't have that hard line here. In fact, let me just remove, uh, where am I at here? What am I doing here? Uh, this, let's take this away. You can kind of see that it's got a very organic feel to it because it's essentially masked part of this. And instead of having that hard line that you see up in there, I masked most of that off because it wasn't essential. The next is the skull, which originally started out as just a skull image. In fact, let's go, let me show you what that image looked like. Back to the, photo, the publisher persona. There we go, there it is right there. Let's bring that up to the top. So that's the image that I originally started with here. Let me show you what I did there, just so you can see exactly how I got to where it was at right there. So let's just assume that I need all this other stuff. So first things first, is I went and I adjusted my levels. I wanted to go pretty extreme with that. Now, I also wanted to reduce my gamma down quite a bit, and the gamma is essentially like any kind of extraneous colors there. It's almost like desaturating as well, but I'm, I'm trying to get as much threshold as possible, not that much threshold. I'm just trying to get as much threshold as possible so now here's the thing, when I applied that levels adjustment, what it did was it just put a levels adjustment on top of an image. Now this isn't a rasterized image. This is still technically, I, I don't exactly know how Affinity refers to this because it's obviously not a vector. It's not curves, it's just, it's like a, it's almost like it's a linked image, but I wanna rasterize this. So I'm gonna rasterize. And now it's an image that I can work with. So now that I got the threshold in there, what I wanna do is I want, I, I know I want to turn this into a halftone. And in order to get a really good halftone image, you kind of need to add a little bit of a blur. You need to have some kind of fuzziness to the design to get a really good, attractive halftone. So I'm gonna go up here and I'm going to Gaussian blur this a tiny bit, not much. I just did it about 4.3, let's bump it up to five. Oops, let's bump it up to five, okay? And then I'm gonna turn around and go to colors and then halftone. Now here's the thing about halftones. If you ever do them linearly, like 90 degrees, one direction or the other, it's gonna look a little weird. So I always try to adjust to at least 15 or 30 degrees just to get an interesting angle because that's kind of how printing works in the first place. Everything is kind of offset in its variance so that you don't get like lines on the printing. Now I changed this to round and I kept it at monochrome. I also messed around with the cell size. I don't exactly remember what it was when I first did it, but I did it like that and then I hit apply. Then I go back up to select and go select sample color. I make sure I click on the black so that it's definitely selecting black. And then I'm just kind of messing with the tolerance and I hit apply. Now I hit command X and command V and it basically just cut that out of there, pasted it on a new layer. I'm gonna hit command D to get rid of the dancing and selection and then I'm gonna delete that original layer. Now you can't really see what's going on there right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and select that and we're just gonna paint this with a broad brush real quick. Hit the B key for a brush. I'm gonna make sure that Protect Alpha is selected and then I'm just gonna, let's, uh, let's pick the blue instead. I'm gonna bring my brush size up quite a bit so I can do this quickly. Make sure I'm on the right layer and then boom. Take that one down so you can see what I did there. So you can see, uh, this one's not quite as elegant as the other one. I, I rushed it, but that's basically what I did. So that is how I achieved this layer right here. Now, I, of course, I obviously deleted all the extraneous stuff on the outside too, all the extra skulls and miscellaneous stuff that was sitting there, but that's how I got that. And again, I have not left Affinity Publisher. I'm still in Affinity Publisher. I'm just in the photo persona. So now here's my original type for the main word muscle. I probably could have kept it like that, it, it, it's not a bad version to go that route, but I wanted to test this out. I wanted to test the theory by applying some stuff that I know that I can only do 
in Affinity Designer. Where are you? There we go. Remove that one. So what I did here is I did the compound tool combined with the contour tool. Now, I have a video for that if you don't know what I'm talking about. But essentially, I was adjusting the vectors, changing them up, moving them around, and getting them, you know, to make this kind of unique experience that you've got going on here. I'm just gonna show you how these shapes work. You can't go watch that video again, but just really quickly, I'm gonna switch over to the designer persona. I'm gonna draw two quick shapes. There's a circle there and a circle there. Two vector shapes. I'm gonna select them both, and then I'm gonna hit, the, hold the Option or Alt key while I do this, I'm gonna hit Add. And what that does is that creates a compound path that's like two layers combined. Then I'm gonna turn around, I'm gonna go to my contour tool. I'm going to click and drag downward, which makes it negative. You can kind of see that blue line where it started. And you can see that it's kind of creating this amoebic shape where it's almost cells dividing. Now if I click on, double click on one, you can kind of see what that did. And essentially that is the process for what I did here. Select that again and go down really far so you can see exactly. And I can option and drag to create more. And that's a rudimentary version of basically what I've done here. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. Now, it took me a while to establish this look, this the multiple M's and actually one of these is actually just that type layer redone. And, and it's so it, it took me some time to get through and it's just about experimentation and play. So now let's talk about this, work it out. Now this was done in the photo persona. So I went back over to photo persona, photo persona, photo persona. I went back over to photo persona and essentially just took my graphics tablet with the pen tool and just wrote this word out, work it out. Now I could have done this in the designer persona too, but I, I, I feel like I feel more comfortable in the photo persona. I feel more comfortable in photo in general when I draw or when I do things like this. And so I just used a regular brush on a pixel layer and I just painted it out just like that. And I added a little bit of a mask on top of that and then just painted another layer, as you can see, another darker layer of this kind of spray tone to it. And you can see here with creativity, originally I had it written as creativity is A, but then I kind of wanted to fill this space a little bit more to kind of create some sort of continuity or, you know, something like to, you know, make this make sense here. And it, it was just like, without that other thing there, let me, let me remove this so you can see. Without that, it just looks like there's a something missing. Now I could have thrown another skull or I could have thrown some sort of other imagery there, but I wanted something a little bit more abstract and that's why I added that. It really has no other cor correlation other th than just to attach the things together. And this typeface is just a typeface that I have used. It's a, if I click on it here, you can see it's called Blue Island Standard. It's one I've had for a while. I don't even remember where I got it. It's, it's just been in my queue for a very long time. And I wanted something that looked a little bit futuristic and kind of like in line with what you see some people using uh, typefaces today. So I wanted that and that felt like kind of worked. Then to top it all off, sign my name. I am of the belief, mostly because I'm an artist, and a designer that I'm gonna sign all my work. And so you're gonna see my signature on some of this stuff because I mean, this is my art just like anything else. I'm of the mind that, you know, I put my time and energy into this and I put a lot of creativity into this. And so I figured I'm going to let people know who made it, so I signed it. The only other thing I wanna do before I sign off on this thing is I want to make it a little bit grungier. Like I wanna give it a little bit more grit. And the best way to do that is to add noise. But how do I add noise to everything at once? I'll give you a real quick and dirty, literally quick and dirty approach. Now, if I take away the background, you can see there's, you know, there's a whole lot of craziness going on. So all I'm gonna do is hit Command, Option, Shift, and E. And what that does is it essentially creates a new layer. And I'm gonna go ahead, just for our purposes here, I'm gonna group all these and I'm going to take them out and you can see now I have one image. I have one single image. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to, where's that preserve? Oh, go to my brush tool, go to my brush tool, make sure again, protect alpha. 
I'm gonna change my color to 50% gray. Now I use CMYK because it's easier to find 50% gray in CMYK than it is in RGB. This image is not CMYK, it's actually an RGB image, but I'm using that color because it's easier for me to get to. I'm just quicker on CMYK than I am with trying to negotiate RGB colors, at least on the sliders. So now I'm just gonna take that layer and I'm just gonna paint over it in gray, just like that. And now I'm gonna go up to noise, add noise. I'm gonna zoom in so I can see what I'm doing. I have it set to monochrome and Gaussian, and then I'm just gonna bring that up, let's say 60%, and I'm gonna hit apply. And that doesn't, obviously, that, what does that do? What is that, what is that doing, Dave? I'm gonna make sure that my group is shown again, but I'm gonna bring this pixel layer down, this gray pixel layer, and I'm gonna change it to overlay. And you probably didn't see much. It didn't look like it changed much. It looks like almost identical, right? But if you zoom in here, you can see there's a lot more grit happening. If I take that off, look at that, right? So there's this softness here that you kind of get without it on there. But then as soon as I add that, it looks like grit. And that grit will kind of look like a little bit of a half toning, a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit of a half toning that you would get in a screen printing type image anyway. So. That's the best way. I, I would do this often when I would make magazines. A lot of times when we were working with cars, we would have to replace the license plate of the car. And we would usually drop in a picture of like say our logo instead of the license plate itself. And so I would drop in the logo and it would always look like it's like it's not part of the image. No matter how many times I tried to like lower the opacity or lower the intensity of it, it just looked like it was like, you could see that it was like something sitting on top of something else. And so I would add a little bit of grain to it and I would zoom in to the actual photo itself and I would kind of try and match the grain to the photo so that when I did apply that, it looked like it was you know, th that it was meant to be. That's a 20 year art director tip for you there, guys. If you want more grain, 50% gray, add your grain, change the layer blending to overlay and live happily ever after. And let's just say this might be too much for you. You can always lower your opacity a little bit too. I'd rather go higher on my grit and then lower the opacity than I would to just try to negotiate how much grit, no, that wasn't enough, try again. Oh, that wasn't enough, try again. Oh, no, I'm not quite there, try again. There you have it, there's the design that's gonna be coming to a t-shirt near you soon. But let's talk about the whole process of what I just did here, like trying to do the entire design in Affinity Publisher. Is it worthwhile? Is it something that I would do again? It's a good question, right? I mean, if I am trying to work within the two different apps, like say Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo at the same time, knowing that there are certain things I can do in Affinity Photo and certain things I can do in Affinity Designer, but I can't do them together at the same time. This is the option. This is the best approach to that. Now, could this change my entire designing process? I don't know, maybe. I'm gonna continue to play with it like this because I want to see if this is actually a viable solution. It just goes to show that even though I could build a 100 page book or magazine or whatever in this app, I can also build a single page and I also have the flexibility to jump back and forth to do all these different things without having to worry about actually having the app open. I do have the apps open. I don't have to have them open. Everything is done right here and it's good. And I give it two thumbs up. And on that note, I'm gonna get out of here, but not before I ask, hey, what do you think of that? What do you think will happen if you did that? Would you do that? Would you work strictly in Affinity Publisher? I'd like to know what your thoughts are on this. Go down to the comments and tell me everything. While you're headed down there, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so already. And then hit that bell so you never wanna miss a thing. Oh, and of course, Share this with all your appropriate homies. Now, if you're entirely brand new to Affinity Publisher and you've never done anything in that app in itself and ever in your life and you still want to know the basics of it, I did a video like that right there. Or if you want to find out what I did with that design, go ahead and check out my other channel where I did a video where I'm comparing print-on-demand companies and I use that design as the t-shirt to test it. Guys, I'm going to get out. Remember, be good today, be better tomorrow. See ya.